We're seeing a regional banking crisis right now. Are we going to see the same type of opportunities for you grow out of that? I think we are. And I think if you look at the environment today, there are actually a fair number of parallels to the GFC. But one of the interesting, interesting things that's not a parallel is that in the GFC, there were really no direct lenders, right, to provide that financing and provide capital to, to mid-sized businesses. So today, you know, I think we're very much seeing a, 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 a tremendous opportunity in, in, uh, in the middle market for high-quality companies with strong, stable uh, business models, mm -hmm. uh, market leaders in the, op in, in the marketplace. So for us, we think we're seeing one of the best opportunities in private credit in, in many years. We've had three of the biggest bank failures in history, three of the four biggest, I should say, what, in less than two months here. There's a lot of concern that they and their peers have started to pull back. Have you seen anything material, a material change right now in people's access in that middle market to lending from the traditional banking sector? Yes, and I think it comes from two sides, right? Mm -hmm. So I think the, the smaller and regional banks that historically may have provided some of that lending capital, I think, are being more conservative today, and mm -hmm. probably rightly so. And I would say that at the larger end, companies that historically would have accessed the broadly syndicated loan market, um, that market is really not there today. Mm -hmm. So it is largely closed to new issue. So what we're seeing is direct lenders are actually taking share relative to the broadly syndicated market, providing larger financings to larger uh, companies mm -hmm. um, that are you know, uh, more significant businesses. And I think that presents a tremendous opportunity in and of itself. What about risk? I know you can't yeah. draw a parallel between risk appetite with the Churchill versus a big money center bank, but there's a certain risk there that those banks are running from. What makes you think that you can make that worth your while? So I'll make a comparison for you to kind of where we were a year ago versus today. Mm -hmm. So a year ago, we were providing mid-market senior secured loans for companies that had typically 50 to, to 250 million in cash flow. Mm -hmm. And we were doing those loans for six to 7% floating rate. That same loan today is now priced at 12%. Mm -hmm. So we're getting twice the return at lower leverage, better underlying covenants, better structures from the standpoint of providing, you know, the incremental equity capital, mm -hmm. better loan to value. So we, we see the opportunity, opportunity today is probably as good as it's ever been. Are most of the deals you're doing floating rate? They're all floating rate. All floating rate here? Correct. So, so you have protection. So that's your protection, more or less. That's exactly right. When it comes to the covenants, we're coming out of an era of no covenants almost, right. or covenant light, whatever you want to call it. Um, how much power do you have now, given the economic downturn, to sort of make demands that in the, in the past would have been normal. So in a word, the balance of power, if you will, is shifted mm -hmm. to, to the, the lenders mm -hmm. in this current environment. So, so we have enough uh, flexibility and leverage to get you know, traditional financial covenants in all of our deals mm -hmm. and, and really put us in a position where we can protect ourselves from that potential downturn. Mm -hmm. and, and the other protection, obviously, is that we're focusing on companies that have performed through COVID, that have performed through the current interest rate environment. So we can evaluate that and ultimately make loans to businesses that are uh, deserving. Well, talk about some of those companies, or at least some of those sectors, and what's attractive. I mean, are we talking cyclical sectors? Are we talking growth like tech? What? Yeah. What are we talking about? So I, I would say, you know, yeah. our principal focus has been and continues to be in areas like software, mm -hmm. recurring revenue businesses, mm -hmm. embedded software that is part of a fundamental operating business, right? So it's recurring revenue, if you will. Um, we're, we're big investors in business services, right? Providing the support to, um, you know, business across the U.S. Market leaders in that area. Mm -hmm. um, logistics, right? Obviously, with COVID, you've seen significant changes in how people work and, 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 and do business, right? So mm -hmm. businesses that support that and play into that change, very important. We're big investors in healthcare. Mm -hmm. So I would say away from more cyclical businesses mm -hmm. where, frankly, You've got a lot more volatility and a lot more risk. So we're not investors in restaurants and retail and, and, and travel and leisure and, and real estate, right? Mm -hmm. So if you think about the areas we focus on and the types of businesses we're financing, frankly, if you're a business that's challenged right now, you're probably not going to be the one raising comp uh, capital. Yeah. Certainly not in the direct lending market, right? Yeah. So higher quality, larger companies with, frankly, better, better structure. What about all the hype around artificial intelligence? Have you looked into, I guess, maybe if not directly, 
uh, going into that space, maybe indirectly with some of the tech companies that you're working yeah. with. You're smiling. Yeah. Well, I, we, well, I was at a dinner last night where this was, yeah. you know, widely discussed. Yeah. I guess there's a song that was released with yes. artificial intelligence yeah, yeah. and sounds exactly like, like the uh, yeah, yeah. weekend and you yeah, know, Drake. That. Yeah, yeah. Um, but look, I think. I think it has a role to play. Yeah. And I think it has a and role. To, okay, go ahead. It has a role to play, but in the basic assessment, yeah. right? At the end of the day, our investors are relying on us to make the fundamental credit decision. So I think there is a role to, to be able to, to do some of the, the underlying work to support the decisions we make. But but not to make the decisions, right? No. I think I think we need to be able to do that. Okay, all right. So no Drake songs coming no, no out of Ken and then not Churchill was it Drake anytime or was it weekend or was I, it I I've yeah. lost track, but I guess in this world it could be anything, right? right. I mean who's to believe what right. uh, what it is. I, I do want to get your thoughts, uh, Ken, on just the size of this industry now. Sure. I mean, we're talking about something that a few years ago or a couple of days ago was kind of a cottage industry, a niche industry. Sure. A lot of players here. Do you anticipate consolidation? I do. And and look, today it's about a one point four trillion dollar market and in fact taking share in some respects from the broadly syndicated loan market and even the high yield bond market. So I, I do think we're going to see consolidation because if you look at what really matters today in direct lending, it's relationships that drive sourcing. And those aren't just one off or two off. Those are long term you know, relationships built upon providing capital over an extended mm -hmm. period. But equally as important is scale. Right. right? So the largest players are, are inevitably and I think very clearly taking share relative to some of the smaller smaller firms. And of course with that scale though, Ken, you have to know comes a lot of scrutiny. There's been a lot yeah. of talk about the direct lending, shadow banking, whatever you yeah. want to call it, and the idea that regulators should be more involved in what you do. Yeah. I don't think so. You know, I think I think we've got a fair amount of regulation today. We're obviously regulated as an asset manager. Mm -hmm. But I would say one of the big differences between the banks and kind of how they operate relative to direct lenders. If you think about it, we manage capital today for over 700 institutional investors globally. And we diversify that risk across those investors. So in that sense, it's, it's a much sounder and longer term durable business model that I think provides an attractive investment for institutions, but is much more diversified than a single bank that may be concentrated with 500 million in, in, in a single lump. So I think in that sense, it's a, it's a great model.